Okay, hello. Um, while the slideshow is loading, I'll go ahead and begin. The first question is, why do we need to keep our records? Um, we hear a lot about record keeping. Number one, it's required. It is, um, if you have a permit or whatever permit you do have, there will be some level of record keeping required. But there's also a benefit to you, the producer, to keep good records. If you're ever questioned about your facility, good records and complete records protect you and demonstrate your level of compliance. Um, documentation is your best defense against any complaint. Um, good records also help you identify trends. Watch for trends such as the level of your nutrient values in your waste analysis will vary throughout the year. Um, also sometimes if you're, um, if you're accustomed to seeing your nutrient, your nitrogen levels at uh, around two pounds of nitrogen per thousand gallons um, and you get one back that's like 4.2 pounds, you know that you need to take another sample immediately. You perhaps got a bad sample or there's an error in the lab. You don't want to be stuck using a sample with a higher nutrient value just because you weren't paying attention and perhaps run out of available um, waste um, application opportunities. It'll help you identify problems. If you're looking at your lagoon level records and your rainfall records and a one inch rainfall shows a three inch rise in your lagoon, you'll know that there's a problem. Perhaps you've got a, um, a leak or um, some diversion that needs to be worked on. Good records will wave warning flags to you long before the inspector arrives. And good records also help you see what's working for you. Um, quickly, there's going to be about four different categories of records we're going to talk about. There's permanent records, um, there's annual records, things that you'll do on a yearly basis, there's the day-to-day -day operational records, and then there are other things, and we'll go over what's in all of those. And the type of records that you have, whatever category they're in, they'll determine really for you how you're going to organize it, what works best for you. Most importantly, though, be organized. For example, if you cannot find your waste plan to show it to the inspector, there's no way that you can be following it. There are various ways. There are filing systems. Some people have notebook systems. Some people have a clipboard system where you keep things nailed up on the wall on the clipboard that you get used on a daily basis. Whatever you're going to do, keep the most current information, probably the current year's information, very handy. Know how to get to it easily. And then the older information, just have it filed so you can get to it with easy access. Retention time is important. The uh, federal permit requires a minimum five years to retain all of your records. Um, we, we work with our farmers and we recommend that you get a good filing cabinet and a, and a safe location that tends not to flood or, or um, maybe in your home office and, and keep information even longer than that. Some things you're going to want to keep forever. Um, things like your original permit, the original and your current waste plans, design information, irrigation inf um, design information, things that are critical to prove the date you established operations um, in the event new um, rules come into place or, or so forth. Here's an example of a very elaborate clipboard system. Um, this is not <laughs> what most people will have three or four, maybe six clipboards of the things that they want to lay their hands on on a daily or weekly basis. So just so they can see it and they, one, they don't forget to take the, the readings, but it's, they can see it and know where to get a hold of it. Other things you're going to want to keep in a filing box or a filing cabinet or in, or in some notebooks. Um, some permanent records we talked about. There are things like your permit and certificate of coverage. Um, your certified waste plan. Here in North Carolina, you're required to have a certified animal waste management plan that's a little bit more than just a waste plan. There are other checklists involved in that. So you'll need all of those documents. Permanent records, you're going to want the design of your waste structures. You're going to want the design of your irrigation equipment. All of that to where you can get a hold of it if there's ever a question. If you're ever looking to either expand or make modifications to your system, you need to know that design information. If your state requires a certified operator, you're going to want the um, certified operator's name and license number. You're going to want to show that they're up to date on their fees and to have all their current educational credits. And then there are things like an emergency plan, your mortality management plan, and other checklists for um, things such as pest control. These are all part of your permanent records. Annual records, things that you're going to um, be working on on a more, somewhat more routine basis, but not every day, like your sludge survey um, for any lagoon that you may have. 
it's required annually. And if you have an exemption letter for a few years, you're going to want to keep that exemption letter along with your sludge survey record so that when the inspector comes, they um, have evidence in front of them that you're still doing what you need to do to stay in compliance. Calibration, your record should show not just the calibrated number for your flow volumes, but the method that you use and your data. Your soil sample analysis, you want to make sure that whatever lab you use for soil sampling, that all the parameters that are required in your permit are included in that analysis, and that the values are reported and not just a range. Um, for example, on some metals, certain labs will only respond with low, medium, high, or very high. And um, as you move into the high and very high, it's very important for the inspector to know what that actual value is. And you need to respond to your analysis appropriately, adding lime, for example, as necessary. And you have your crop yield records. Application rates are based on realistic yield expectation. If your yields are down, then your crops can't be utilizing the nutrients as they should be. You can talk to a technical specialist or an agronomist and make adjustments so that you can maximize your yields. Here in North Carolina, if you can prove over the course of time that your yields are higher than the book values, for realistic yield, then you can have an agronomist um, adjust your application rates even higher to uh, reflect what your actual yields are. And now we're going to talk about your operational records, your everyday records, things that you need to um, be actively participating in. Your rainfall records, um, you'll be taking um, daily readings of your rain gauge. And even if it's zero, you need to make sure you put a little dash in the line, make sure you're t taking that information down. And um, also, you're going to have your one-inch rainfall. Um, uh, if you have a one-inch rainfall or more, some states require that you do a walk-around inspection of your entire waste system to make sure that you don't have any problems. Um, some states have developed forms that will make your record keeping easier. Here in North Carolina, we have one form for your rainfall, waterline inspection, and waste level records. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. And some of this helps you follow your trends um, as well as making sure that you don't have to keep up with three to six different sheets of paper and keep it simple for you. Um, your waste analysis, again, frequency um, and requirements vary by state, um, but I know in North Carolina we require a sample within 60 days, either before or after any application. If you keep your waste analysis in order and keep those records, you can follow trends. You can see the seasonal changes in your nitrogen values. You can see if there's, going to be, if there's been a change in the functioning of your waste structure. And then um, your irrigation records. We'll, we'll look at um, two examples of some irrigation record keeping, one blank form from North Carolina and another um, example of some records from uh, an inspection in Georgia. Um, but, but before we do that, um, stocking and mortality, you're required to keep up with that. Um, and you need more than just keeping up with the door cards of how many animals are in that particular barn. You're going to want to keep that pulled together. And if you keep track of it on a weekly basis, um, even better than a monthly basis, you can see definite trends in your mortality. And you can maybe identify, um, is there a certain time of year where I've got higher mortality issues? Do I need to make adjustments to ventilation? Is there a certain stage in the turn of animals that you have? Um, am, I, am I losing a lot more in the third week? What am I looking at? Is there a disease issue that I need to be prepared for? This helps you not only today, but planning for your next turn of animals. Here is an example of a, um, a form that North Carolina uses. The actual form has 31 days, but we cut it off to make it where you can see it easier. Here you can keep the waste level records for up to six different waste structures all on one simple form. You can initial for your daily water line inspections, the rainfall records, and in any comments you may make. You'll have a different sheet of paper like this one day for every month of the year. Um, you can definitely see if if there's a rise that occurs in a lagoon level that's not related to rainfall, perhaps you have an undetected leak, or maybe it's just that you flushed your system, but you can watch these things. Drops in your irrigation, in your waste levels or freeboard, it should correspond to irrigation or a transfer of waste. And if not, perhaps you um, need to investigate that. The interesting thing is, on some of these, you can even see the effect of evaporation on dry, windy days. This form, I know it looks really busy, 
but it's all on one page, and it is an irrigation form. It includes your weather codes. If it's hard to see over there on the far right side of the day before, day of, and day after application. This form also balances for nitrogen and phosphorus. So if you're on a nitrogen-limited um, plan for that particular field, you keep going until the nitrogen level is zero, and you'll have a negative balance on phosphorus. But if it's a phosphorus-limited field, you stop when phosphorus is zero, and you're left with a, a, um, a nitrogen balance, but you can use it either way. This form, um, as I said, is um, the form that um, NPDES farms in North Carolina will use, or um, the federal CAFO farms, and it's available online, and um, it should be available in conjunction with this webcast. Here is an example of some records that um, came out of an inspection in Georgia. And it looks like they're doing pretty good going along, but because the farmer didn't do his um, summary calculations until the end of the year, he wound up over applying. Perhaps it's that he didn't do that he did the calculations all the way through on the waste, but forgot to add in the commercial fertilizer applications until the end of the year. And either way, he wound up with an over application. And timely record keeping on a regular basis would have prevented this all the way. This is an unnecessary violation that's just waiting to happen. So don't wait till you get the call that the inspector's coming to try to do all your numbers. That instills panic, and we don't want this to be a panic. We want this to be your tool to help you manage your farm according to your plan. And finally, there are some other records that you'll have. Um, Previous inspections, you'll get an inspection report. Some states have duplicate forms, so they'll hand you the form of the inspection before they leave. Others will mail you a report. Um, keep a hold of these things. It shows areas of improvement since your last inspection. Um, if you have a new inspector coming in that's not been there before and there's a problem area you've worked on, this is a good way to show the inspector, say, here's what I've had before, here's what I've been doing, and here's my improvement. A notice of violation or NOV and any responses. If you've gotten a violation letter, keep that along with the correspondence that you had back and forth. You're going to want to. Sh you may need to show later the limit of the of the issues that you had and all the steps that you were taken to correct that. Um, and this you'll want to hang on to for a long time. A plan of action or a POA for say sludge cleanout or other actions that are outside of the typical waste production and management. You're going to want to keep a record of those on your facility, and you want to make sure that wh whatever technical specialist develops your plan of action, that this plan does not conflict with your regular waste plan, and that you don't wind up overloading the fields that are in your regular plan. Any, um, you're going to keep up with any transfers of waste off-site to a different facility, as a previous speaker mentioned. Um, perhaps a third-party hauler record, you're going to want to keep that. Spills, if you have any spills, you're going to want to document that. You want to document what surface waters were reached, if any, and if you reported when you did report that to the appropriate agency, you're going to want a record of that. Um, what samples you took, keep those samples and take um, any pictures as necessary. If your permit specifically requires monitoring, then you're going to want to keep all your monitoring records. Um, some of this is individual basis and some of it is on a state permit level. Any corrective actions, you're going to, going to keep up with the required actions, any deadlines, the activities to comply, take photos, keep receipts, all of those things necessary to prove your activity. Okay, now this is what wraps up my portion. But um, I'm going to introduce to you now Glenda Wright, and she's from Baxley, Georgia, and she has four dairy facilities. And uh, she's moved her operations from being an outside operation to inside and now operates an anaerobic digester to generate power from her dairy manure. She has learned through the course of many inspections about the importance of good record keeping, and now Glenda's going to talk to you a little bit about her record keeping experience. Glenda? Hey. I'm on. Hey, I'm sorry. Can y'all hear me or am I still muted? Yes, Linda, you're on. Okay, okay. All right. We, uh, yeah, I, with, with our inspections, that was the one thing I learned is that records are of utmost importance if you have them at hand and ready. And, of course, we like that we had so many dairies. It was important that we kept everything handy, and um, it made our inspections not stressful as long as you had, you know, your records. And so we, um, we, I, I do have someone who helps me, you know, my soil samples and my lagoon samples and 
you know, test well so that um, I have everything as I should have it. And um, our inspections have sometimes been stressful. We started with some violations in the beginning, but um, we worked our way through consent agreements. And um, one of the dairies, we, we actually, when we took it over, it was in a consent agreement. We worked our way through that and um, got ourselves in compliance. And so um, anyway, we, we've come a long way. And like I said, at the end result, we have put in a digester to handle the waste here um, and now this time we're currently only operating one facility. We we were a large family entity, and now we've just, you know, cut back. And we have just one family, and it's just us and our children that work this dairy today. And we have a digester here, and it handles all of our, our solids and also produces electricity. And um, then we reuse the solids, of course, for bedding. And, and so it's all stored on manure or, or reused in our barns and um, doesn't have to leave, leave the facility. But um, I said mostly just keeping the records and um, having everything as it should be when when the inspector comes and um, and knowing that you will be inspected and um, of course we're just re- required once annually, you know, for inspection. But um, realize at any time that we could be inspected and so we're just just be prepared and try to stay prepared and keep our facility and our records in order. And I guess that's all I have to say at this point. <laughs> Thank you.